Okay, we're going to try a triangle proof here. And we're going to go paragraph proof style again, uh, proving two triangles congruent. And this one takes some uh, work or some uh, spatial visualization. So let's look at what two triangles are trying to prove first, because you see there's a whole bunch of triangles really inside this diagram. So ADC, triangle ADC here in blue, trying to prove trying to prove it congruent to triangle CEA in pink right there okay so they overlap each other and looking at what we're given that BAC is congruent to BCA um, which is this like this well it's covering up like what angle is that talking about? Uh, it's hard to see. So over here, I'm going to draw those triangles again, and I'm going to try and think about the order of the vertices and stuff to keep straight my uh, congruency statements. So I'm going to draw them both oriented the same way. And the purple one, let's just write our angles A, E, C, just sliding it over. Now notice the blue to match up the angles correctly, it has to do a flip like this, a flip kind of over its horizontal axis. A horizontal flip. And notice in the congruency statement, it says A corresponds to C, and you see that A is first, and C. So A is, needs to be congruent to C. So that means on the blue triangle, this is vertice A, C. And then it's D to E. So this is D, and then it is C to A. And you can see how that's just a flipping of the perp, uh, flipping of the blue triangle from this original over to uh, where I drew it off to the right. So that's what those two look like. So that means now when I run through my outline of this proof before I write anything, uh, I can make things a little more clear. Because see, I am given that BAC is congruent to BCA. So BAC right here, notice that is all of angle A on the blue triangle. Think about that for a second. On the blue triangle, that's the whole big angle A. Because see, when I talk about the angle A on the pink triangle, it's this smaller portion, okay? So that's a smaller one for the pink triangle. And that is congruent to BCA, which is over here, and that is big angle C on the purple triangle. So those two are what we have congruent. Okay. Moving on to the other one, CD bisects angle BCA. That's saying this angle is congruent to this angle right there. Okay, we're going to leave that for a moment, and we're going to come over and notice that AE now bisects um, AE bisects BAC. So that would be this is now congruent to this. Whew, there's going to be a lot of steps to this one. And kind of the outline here is since, let me get in the yellow here, this big angle is congruent to this big angle. That means I can say the sum of their parts must be congruent. And then I'll be able to say something is congruent to something and eventually I'll be able to say that little angle C on the blue is congruent to little angle A on the pink. I'll have that. And the last thing I'll do, and we'll try and break that down later because it's a, it's a little interesting. The last thing I'll have is that this side, AC, is in common between both of them. And so that would be the reflexive property. 
Um, and then you can see that I've got angle, side, angle, and the triangles will be congruent. Okay, so wow, a lot to work with this, this one. So as we start our proof, um, maybe if we get the e easy things out of the way, which it would be the reflexive property. So I can say by the reflexive property, AC is congruent to AC. Okay, so that gives me one of my sides, the only side I'm gonna actually use. Now I'm gonna work with these bisecting things and, and what are they telling me is congruent to each other? I'm gonna get that into my proof. So I'll use since CD bisects that angle. Then, so it splits it in half, so the angle is getting split in half. So um, I can say, let's say, angle ECD is congruent to angle DCA. So it splits the big angle C in half like that. I encourage you to kind of slow down and look at that by, so why is this true that a bisector splits it in half by the definition of angle bisector? Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing for our other bisected angle. So since AE bisects the big angle BAC, Then angle, so BAC, then angle DAE is congruent to angle EAC. Okay, well see, this doesn't help us really out right as it is. Oh, I'm sorry, by the definition of angle bisector. But what we have does not really help us out because DAE and EAC are not both on the triangles. In fact, only one of them is the angle EAC, which lies on uh, the purple triangle. So we have to work with this. And I know that the big angle here again circled in gold that big angle is congruent to that angle which means the parts of them should equal each other so I'm going to say what says the parts add up to the whole angle what theorem do we have well that's the angle addition postulate by the angle addition postulate I'm gonna make two statements side up a little bit, zoom out and side up. By the angle addition postulate, I can say that angle BAC is equal to, or technically I should say the measure of angle BAC, so that big guy, is equal to the measure of DAE plus the measure of EAC. And I can say the measure of angle BCA is equal to the measure of ECD plus measure of angle DCA. Make those two statements. Okay, well, what do we know? We know that those two, BAC and BCA, are congruent. So I can say since the measure of BAC is equal to the measure of angle BCA. Now depending on how particular um, a teacher is, they might want you to say, well, since BAC is congruent to BCA, then the measure is equal to the measure by the definition of congruence. We're gonna kind of slide over that part and just because we're given 
See, why am I making a statement? Because up here, uh, in the details of the proof, we are given that those two are congruent. Since those are congruent, or the measures are equal, we can make this long statement, measure of angle DAE plus the measure of angle EAC is equal to the measure of ECD. So I'm just making a lot of substitutions here. So this is going to be by the substitution property. Now again, all these angles, all these letters floating around make it pretty confusing. So I encourage you to just pause the video and see where each angle is coming from. Because um, then once you see where it all comes from, it makes a little more sense. Well, what am I trying to show? I need to show that EAC is congruent to so EAC is congruent to DCA. So in my proof here, I do not care about DAE. I do not care about ECD. So is there any way I can get those out? Well, yes, I can, because what do I know about DAE? Slide on up here, it's congruent to that angle. What do I know about ECD? It's congruent to that angle. So I'm going to make two substitutions. And I can say, by the substitution property, and you might wanna say by the substitution, or you might wanna say, since this angle is congruent to that, by the substitution property, and we're maybe cutting a little corners, I can say the measure of angle EAC plus the measure of angle EAC is equal to the measure of angle DCA plus the measure of angle DCA. Okay, if you can see what I did, I took this angle DAE and substituted it with EAC because I know they are congruent. I did the same thing with ECD. Substitute it with DCA because I know they are congruent. Oh boy. Well, now it's sort of just adding uh, a little bit algebra almost. So I can say that this is equal to 2 times the measure of angle EAC. Okay, because how many EACs do I have? Two of them. And this is 2 times the measure of angle DCA, which divide by 2 on both sides. Okay, do the same thing to the left and right, and you get measure of angle EAC is equal to the measure of angle DCA. Wow, all that work, but that did get me where I wanted. I now just showed our angle up here, EAC on the purple, is congruent to DCA on the blue. And so there, let's take a look through it. That, in my proof, is one of the angles. Way up here on the first line, I got one of my sides. Okay, and then what I'm given, oh, I'm sorry, this is all over. Up in the top left is my other angle, uh, the one in red here of angle C on the purple and A on the blue. So I have my three. I have my angle side angle. So therefore, I can make the concluding statement, and I'm going to bring it all the way over here so that we can keep our diagrams uh, on the page for us. I can say, since, I'm going to list my parts, since angle BCA is congruent to angle BAC, and that was in our given, okay, up here that was in our given, that side AC is congruent to side AC, okay, that was in our reflexive property at the start. And EAC is congruent to DCA. That was what we did all those lines of the proof to show. Then triangle ADC is congruent to triangle CEA by angle side angle. 
Well, if you can get through that proof, you can get through any proof. Um, let me give you the full look at this. So many steps to that one. In fact, all of these steps right here were all to show just one side congruent to one side. And we threw in the angle addition postulates and a lot of substitution. So a lot of work. But if you can follow that along, and it's hard, but pause the video um, and look at where I got each angles and put it together. If you can follow along there, you can take and tackle any proof.